being an architect in Mexico is it's um, it's great. Uh, uh, there are many reasons. We have an incredible background, um, incredible history uh, of, of architecture from the pre-Columbian to the uh, colonial to the modern and uh, also incredible vernacular architecture that I uh, personally am very attached and, and love. Uh, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're losing it, but, uh, but there's still, still some out there and we have to preserve it and, and to encourage it. Um, and uh, what I love about being an architect in Mexico is that we have a lot of freedom. Um, lots of freedom. We have a, a very um, mild climate, at least uh, in Mexico City where I work. And that uh, gives us uh, an incredible um, flexibility. We can, uh, architecture uh, that, that we do can, it has lots to do with the environment, with the inside and the outside. Uh, spaces uh, flow. The light comes in, um, vegetation is it's, it's very important. Um, and like I said, I'm very lucky to, to, to work here. Um, <coughs> uh, the, work, the workforce here um, is amazing. Uh, I, I, I like to get involved in the construction of the projects, uh, and I spend uh, lots of time in the, in, the, in the work in the construction sites. Um, talking with people and, um, and there's great enhancements. Um, what's also nice about uh, this country is that uh, things are not yet that uh, standardized uh, and that um, uh, so we still have this liberty to invent and to design and, um, and what's great is for example you, when you design something um, then you have to construct it. Uh, and as opposed to having everything prefabricated in a, in a factory, we do it uh, handmade in the, um, in, in, in the um, construction site. So then the, arc, the dialogue between the architect and the, um, and the labor force and the people that, that do it uh, becomes very important. And the process, um, the process becomes part of the final uh, work. I don't know how, how to how to say it. Um, you have this idea, and then you work with the people that are going to build it, and, um, and and then the unexpected happens. You know, you they're very creative, and then you know crazy things happen. And I, I think that if, if that's translated into the end project, I think that's very important. The, the, oh, well, what I like about uh, the architecture we do here is that uh, when you see it, uh, it's not built by um, it's not built by this uh, machine and it's not built by this uh, 3D printer. You you, you see the hand and uh, I know every stone that's put in the house. You, you see that, that there's um, there's this um, real feel to it. I don't know if 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 if, if I'm saying it right, but there's. Um, a uh, man has been there, and, and I think that's beautiful. And that translates a little bit into my uh, love for vernacular architecture. It, it, it makes me want to build more, <laughs> because it's, uh, it's humanizing, and I think uh, the, the world needs uh, uh, more humanization. When you're building something, sometimes uh, the project asks you, please put a window here or please open it or please and materials um, are part of it. Sometimes uh, the, the, the project asks for specific materials. Uh, for, I love materials. Um, um, I think I have a, a very small knowledge of materials yet and that's a, that's a great thing about being an architect. I'm, I'm just starting to to work with materials and uh, every time I, I use a different material um, uh, it gives me more tools for the next project uh, and, um, and I'm all, always looking for different materials. Um, the best thing is to use local materials. Um, sometimes uh, you can't, um, but I like real materials. Uh, real materials as in stone, wood, earth. Um, I love concrete because of the texture and what you can do with it. 
Um, I like handmade materials. Um, um, I also like very smooth, uh, uh, you know, machine work materials that contrasts with the roughness and that makes a, a balance. And um, see, I'm in love with materials because you can do many things and it's, it's amazing. For example, glass. I think uh, glass is uh, it's a material that uh, vernacular architecture uh, didn't have and we have. So, I mean, let's use it. It's an incredible way uh, of making the inside out and you can uh, bring light in. Um, mm. The space is out. It's, 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 it's fantastic. Uh, metal also. Um, you can do incredible things. When you want things to be light, you can. I mean, stone, you make uh, heavy walls that are beautiful. But if you have a... Uh, a variety of, uh, of materials, and we're very lucky to have them. Uh, let's use them uh, in intelligent ways, ways that make sense and uh, to make the projects work. Um, um, I can't tell you a specific uh, material that I like. I, I like them all. And, uh, and as time goes by, I know more, and I bring them into my uh, architectural language, and I think um, that uh, enriches... Uh, architecture itself. Um, what can I say? I guess um, throughout time, uh, throughout history, we've had uh, an incredible array of uh, architecture, um, a great architecture everywhere in the whole world. And, um, and I think uh, that time is uh, the real judge for uh, good architecture. Um, it's not a magazine or a, or, or a photo or a video. It's, I think it's time. Um, and timeless architecture for me is, um, have, you know, it's, uh, it's what stays. And, and um, in more recent times, in, in, in contemporary architecture, architecture, for example, uh, I'd like to cite uh, this um, convent made uh, by uh, Luis Barragan in Mexico. It's for the Capuchinas convent, mm -hmm. and uh, w once uh, when I went there, um, I went to to this uh, to see this uh, nuns pray at six in the morning with the sunrise, and that's when I decided I wanted to be an architect. Um, it was uh, an incredible moment because it was um, it was architecture that sparkled something that was more than architecture. It, it was um, it created feelings, and, and then it, it all made sense. I mean, um, uh, it, it, it was uh, not only beautiful, not only functional, not only um, um, appealing and materials and everything we've talked about. It was more than that. Uh, and I think when not, it's very hard to 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 to, to find that. Um, I think I, I also experienced that. Uh, in Peter Sunther's uh, baths in, in, in Therms in, in Bals. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's, uh, it's projects that are not just beautiful, um, environmentally adapted and uh, context. Uh, right? There's more than that. And, and when I said if, so, if, if someday I can create something that it's timeless and, and it evokes uh, more than than this, I think that's uh, that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to try all my life to, to to achieve and and learn as much as I can with every project to arrive. Maybe one day, hopefully, to create something that uh, that is meaningful and timeless. Uh, that's uh, those are my influences. I think a vernacular architecture is very important to me. Um, it's been a big influence uh, because it's um, what I said. It's um, specific uh, to the place. It's um, it's friendly to the environment. It's friendly to 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 the people, and it's made for people by people. And I think that's um, that's uh, very important for me.